A good evening, everyone. What a wonderful evening, always, and especially these these uh, early autumn evenings. Uh, these three readings have a wonderful blend. Uh, usually, it's just the first and the third, at least from my point of view, and the second is sort of off, somewhat connected, but very, not that much. But this evening, they're very connected. Uh, we begin with the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 to, 6 to 10a. This reading begins and ends with the words, On this mountain, referring physically to Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, from Isaiah the 20, 24, verse 23c. From a spiritual point of view, I understand this phrase to mean that this mountain was the place of soul where God came down to his people. His people lifted themselves up or reached, reached up to God. This section of Isaiah is referred to as the apocalypse of Isaiah to provide a hope or dream of what God would someday do for his people who are still captives living in a foreign land. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The veil that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death itself. I understand Isaiah to mean God, that God will destroy the worldliness or lack of God-centeredness that leads to so much misery and devastation on this earth that could only end in death. He would wipe away every tear and especially the reproach of the slavery of his, of his people. Because the hand of God will rest on this mountain, there will be the kind of rejoicing among all peoples that one experiences at a spectacular, wondrous banquet. He is the God that spreads the table before us. A cup overflows from Psalm 23 for today. In the third reading, Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Again, Jesus delivers a parable to the chief priest and the elders. He is accusing them of being the ones who rejected who reject God's invitation to come to the feast for his son, Jesus. They will be the ones who will be destroyed because they will murder God's son, and their city will be destroyed. All other peoples would be invited to the heavenly banquet. The symbolism of the man who attended the wedding feast without a wedding garment is of someone who was not there to embrace the joy of the king, but only to partake of the food and the drink. To accept God's invitation means that we must choose, that we choose to belong to God and to nothing else. The feast that all were invited to was to have Christ as their life. Those who do not have Christ as their life will be cast into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. In our second reading, Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 to 14, 19 to 20, the church in Philippi offers assistance to Paul. Paul writes that he is able to do well, whether he has little or a lot, as he says, I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Paul teaches them to do the same when he says, My God will supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. In these three readings, we are told to put our faith in our all-provident God, who rejoices in being a father, who gives his children good things because he loves us so very much. How wondrous, truly wondrous that is.